You definitely come across some interesting bridges in your travels. This one's like two feet above the water level. A very interesting and unique piece of property sit here at Woola Rock in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. You see the initials up there, FP Frank Phillip Woola Rock Museum and Wildlife Preserve. Go here and pay and it's uh, $12 for entry fee. So you might see some animals on the drive in. This is a replica of the first Phillips 66 gas station. Just the necessities at that time, a fireplace, electric coffee pot, radio, telephone, that's about it, couple rooms and a file cabinet. You don't want to mess with these guys, wasps. Uncle Frank's rules of the ranch, the west is wild, not responsible for accidents or acts of nature. Check your guns at the gate, partner, no concealed weapons allowed on Willow Rock grounds where the animals roam free. Please stay in your car until you reach museum parking lot. Animals can be as wild as the West. Hey everybody, it's Mark the Lost Traveler. How many times did I say Frank Phillips? And we're ready to travel. I look like a bug. We're going all green today, except for the shirt. Well, when you come to the gate, they give you an audio CD, if you still have a CD player in your car, and it'll give you an overview of the grounds here. So that's what we're gonna listen to. Woola Rock, where oil meet the cowboy, the Indian, and the outlaw. Today we look back at history and the romantic times of an era long past. But to Frank Phillips, Woola Rock had the magic place and it's always called him back. Back to this very ground that he loved to call home. Welcome to Woola Rock Museum and Wildlife Preserve. This audio message will provide you with an overview of Woola Rock's unique history as you enjoy the two mile drive through the animal preserve to the main grounds. Be sure to observe the rugged terrain, the native bluegrass, and the rock work that made this ranch a showplace. Think back to the early 1920s and 30s, and what was going on in Oklahoma. Vast oil fields were being discovered that were accompanied by immense wealth in the form of black gold for the fortunate few. Boomtowns sprung up almost overnight and the Oklahoma prairies were dotted with oil derricks, pump jacks, small oil towns, and camps where the oil field workers lived. After drilling several dry holes, Frank Phillips and his brother, L.E., drilled their first gusher in 1905. In 1917, the brothers formed Phillips Petroleum Company, and both were now very wealthy oil men. In the early 1900s, Oklahoma was a rough and rowdy state, well known for outlaw gangs and bank robbers. Indian territory became the final safe haven for many cutthroats and thieves. Why was millionaire Frank Phillips content to live in this environment when he could have lived anywhere he desired? As a matter of fact, he loved Bartlesville, Oklahoma but spent about half his time in New York City, making deals with other oil tycoons. East Coast bankers, industrialists, politicians, and famous entertainers. He wanted to return their kindness and hospitality, and considered building a guest home in Long Island, or Connecticut, where he could entertain his East Coast friends. On the other hand, Frank Phillips, affectionately known in Bartlesville as Uncle Frank, and developed a love for the excitement, imagination, and adventure of early America and the American West. He loved the vast expanse of the prairies and the natural beauty of the Osage Hills, especially the huge rock cliffs overlooking Clyde Lake that would eventually become the site he chose to build his beloved Willow Rock Lodge. Over the years, Uncle Frank developed strong friendships with the Osage Indians and in fact was honored as the first white person ever adopted into the Osage tribe. Although the majority of his business was conducted back east, Frank's heart was in Oklahoma. He had already built a home in Bartlesville for his family and after being unable to find the ideal location for a country home in the Northeast, he realized the place he had been searching for to entertain on a grand scale was right here in the Osage Hills. He visualized a place where he could relax as well as entertain friends and business associates. 
you can experience the passion that Frank Phillips felt as you tour the grounds that he loved and the ranch and museum that he created. Originally, the ranch was called the Frank Phillips Ranch and adopted the FPR brand. The name Willerock was actually coined for the large ranch house from the three natural elements from the Osage Hills, the woods, lakes, and rocks. It was the perfect name and so unique that eventually the whole ranch became known as Willow Rock. In addition to cattle and the string of fine horses, Uncle Frank brought in 500 wild and domestic animals from all parts of the world to live in safety behind the eight-foot-high fence that enclosed his ranch. Included were zebra, pronghorn antelope, elk, and five species of deer, Texas longhorns, Scotch Highland cattle, zebus, water buffalo, camels, Sardinian donkeys, and a kangaroo. He had 90 buffalo shipped from Pier, South Dakota to Willorock in January of 1926. The offspring from this herd still roams the grounds of the ranch today. The blackjack wooded hills were abundant with wild turkey, quail, and waterfowl, along with small game, such as rabbits, squirrels, foxes, and raccoons. Big game, such as white-tailed deer and elk, wandered the cross timbers and river bottoms and black bears shared the forests with other predators, such as cougars, bobcats, and timber wolves. Today, Willorock is home to buffalo, deer, elk, longhorn and brahma cattle, water buffalo, llamas, zebra, Scotch Highland cattle, goats, and wild turkeys. As most of the animals roam freely, visitors may not see all the species on their first visit on any given day. The general opinion is that this is what makes the Woolerock experience unique and creates the desire to return again and again. About a half mile into Woolerock, you can see the Mountain Man camp on your left. Open from mid-March through Labor Day is an authentic reenactment of an 1830s trader's camp. When you reach the main grounds, be sure to take time to explore the Woolerock Museum. It opened in 1929 and the lodge that was constructed in 1925 to 27. Other original structures are the bunkhouse gallery located next to the lodge and the stone dairy barn that now houses the petting barn. Members of the staff and volunteers are on hand to tell the exciting story of these facilities and the early Woolerock happenings. The Woolerock Museum began as a simple one-room stone hangar with the famous Woolerock airplane in 1929. Over the years, the Woolerock Museum has developed into a world-class American Western Museum that shares a rich heritage that is told throughout a collection of some of the finest Western art, artifacts, and American Indian cultural items. The museum collection includes works of Remington, Russell, Moran, Frank Tenney Johnson, and scores of other famous artists of the West. Unique to Willow Rock is the incredible Colt Gun Collection and one of the finest collections of Navajo Indian blankets in the world. The Willow Rock Lodge was the first facility constructed on the ranch. It was constructed of Arkansas pine beginning in 1925 and completed in 1927. The lodge is a nine bedroom ranch house that reflects the simple beauty and rugged image that Frank Phillips loved. Adorned with animal heads, one-of-a-kind items, and memorabilia from the rugged beginnings of Oklahoma, the lodge is a testimony to the lifestyle of the oil boom era. Willorock souvenirs and gift items can be purchased in the gift shop, which is located in the museum. When you're hungry, visit the Buffalo Haunt for barbecue buffalo sandwiches, hamburgers, and snacks. Don't forget to visit the walking trails of Willorock with three different scenic trails through the Osage Hills, including Princess Falls. Life was an adventure for Frank Phillips, and his beloved ranch was his retreat at a time when even the basic aspects of everyday life were less predictable. He enjoyed simple, natural pleasures at Willow Rock. The land, the history, the people, and the wildlife. 
The magic of Wooler Rock is very much alive today, and we encourage you to find it. During your visit, it's our hope that you will experience how one man's passion led to the beautiful sights and experiences that Wooler Rock visitors enjoy today. Imagine the lifestyles of the oil boom era and experience the heritage of early America through the art, the artifacts, the buildings, and the land. Let time stand still as you gaze upon the woods, lakes, and rocks. Willow Rock is a place where buffalo still roam freely, and history is relived every day. We invite you to share the very special vision created by Frank Phillips in the early 1900s and preserve today for future generations. We're going across Swan Lake. Hey guys, cooling off there in the hot day? Oh, we're coming into a haunted grove. Gorgeous day out. You definitely want to get here early in the morning. That's when the animals are out or your better chance to see them all. That is cool. Not a care in the world. You can hear them chowing down on the grass. In the early 1900s, these hills and creek bottoms were favorite hideouts for bank robbers and thieves. This statue is called Thanks for the Rain, a reminder to us that the earth and the grass are not man-made. This guy is spear fishing. I don't know if you can see him, but there's some fish down in there. And people have thrown coins. 160 million years ago, dinosaurs lived here. Oil and coal deposits were forming and the petrified woods in the plaza that you're about to see were living trees. Petrified wood. She is ready for action. Let's start touring the grounds now. Mr. Phillips. The oil man, Frank Phillips. Those of us who have been fortunate have a debt to society which I believe can be paid by training and educating the youth of the nation. I dedicate this museum to the boys and girls of today, the fathers and the mothers of tomorrow. May they profit by a knowledge of man's past and be enabled to plan and live a happier future. Frank Phillips, 1873 to 1950. They have these pictured medallions of all the presidents from George Washington, Lincoln, Jefferson, all the way down to current today. I'll definitely say one thing about this place. Uh, there's a lot to see. It's pretty overwhelming, but uh, very informative. He wasn't a hunter. A lot of this stuff was uh, either died on the land or was given to him. And over here, there's a bald eagle. A beaver. Michigan Wolverine. Head pots. Head pots are considered a pinnacle of the Mississippian culture and are among the rarest clay vessels made between AD 1200 and AD 1500. They are distinguished from other pots in that they are formed to the shape of the human head. Hundreds of acres here, they have found a lot of artifacts on the land, uh, spears, arrowheads, A bunch of more arrowheads. All these pots are numbered, and then over here they tell you where they are, the year, and where they came from. These are all real blankets, nothing fake in here. The paintings, all the artwork. This painting is called the Navajo Fire Dance. Well, if you remember, we were in North Platte uh, looking at the trains, and they were also talking about uh, Buffalo Wild Bill. This gentleman here, uh, Robert Lanou, he met uh, Buffalo Bill over in Europe when he was watching his Wild West show, and it sparked a passion for him and the American West. So he started doing paintings and learning about the American West and the Indians. Kirshna dolls are carved by the Hopi Indians, and they represent supernatural beings who, according to tradition, 
once lived among the Pueblo Indians. The Crow Indian Dance. Got a cowboy up in there holding the American flag. A couple guys are asleep. Ceremonial shirt worn by the Sioux. Different kinds of uh, plain Indian pipes. Sioux pipes. That pipe had a hatchet on the end. Chief Yellow Shield. These are like the first food trucks. The old chuck wagon. You got beans cooking there. Back here they have bread going on. There's a wash sink. Place you can get a quick shave. Branding your livestock. Definitely a lot of different types of spurs. I'd hate to be the horse to get kicked with that one. Well, I did know they had different types of spurs for men and women. The first ones we saw, of course, were men, and these were for women. This saddle here was built by the Myers Saddle Company of Sweetwater, Texas in 1941, and it was billed as the world's finest saddles. She's got her child in one hand, and a shotgun in the other. From 1869 to 1912, about 43 years or so, the stagecoach traveled over 625,000 miles. And from Fort Logan to Dorsey was 20 miles. And six horses would pull this stagecoach. As I mentioned earlier, the painter Robert Landu, I hope I pronounced that right. There's a lot of paintings in here done by him. And of course, this one looks pretty familiar, this gentleman, General Custard. And next to that, the last stand, winter in the mountains. Now that is roughing it. This particular plane was built for Art Goebel, a young California stunt pilot who entered the Dole Flight 2,437 mile race from Oakland, California to Honolulu, Hawaii. And first prize, and there's the check, $25,000. Pretty interesting here is this wheel was part of the Willie Mays landing gear. Yeah. This particular set of landing gear could be discarded to reduce drag and achieve faster speeds. So they yeah. dropped the wheels to go faster? Yeah. And I'm not sure how they landed. They probably tipped over when the struts hit the ground. Yeah. Here's a helmet Willie Post used in 1934 for his pressurized suit. The original helmet is part of the collection of the Smithsonian Institution. This replica is one of four and here's a sketch they made of the pressurized suit back in 1934. And it was tested in Bartlesville. This is how they were pulling black gold out of the ground. These 25 horsepower engines were fueled by natural gas piped from the wells, which would in turn swing the rods here out to the fields, down to the pumping stations. Back in the 1800s and early 1900s, this is how they got the fuel out with these horse-drawn tank wagons out to the farmers. This was a leased home, so when you worked in the oil fields, you would lease your home from the oil companies. And uh, back in the 1930s, um, Oscar Garrison, his wife Mary Jo, young son Jack, and baby girl Shelby lived in this lease house. And there is not much to it. Your kitchen, a stove, minor living room, just a few essentials and two beds. And that was it. Life pretty simple back then. A carved ivory tusk. And ivory is hard white material from the tusk traditionally from elephants and teeth of animals that can be used in art or manufacturing. Probably one of the largest gun collections in the world. Everything from handguns, rifles, pistols, machine guns. Model 1883 Gatlin gun. A lot of the guns that he collected and bought had some very low serial numbers on them, so they're worth a lot of money. There are just a lot of rifles, handguns, it's, it's amazing in here. 
A lot of these are Colt and Remington guns. Yeah, he definitely loved his Colt guns. 44 40 caliber. There's Buffalo Bill. That gun room was pretty cool. I mean, uh, like I said, Colts, Remingtons, even some Winchester rifles. Nowadays, if they, if they saw you with that many guns in your room, uh, they'd come get you. And there's the five brothers. Who would have known? He started out as a barber. And then a banker. And then into the oil business. The oil man. And as he's affectionately known by everybody, Uncle Frank. Here's what his office looked like back in New York City. You got Lindbergh at Paris. Can't read the rest of it on his desk there. Picture of his kids. A cigar and probably some bourbon or scotch. Dolls from 1915. These are vintage lead figurines from the 1930s. That is a big marble collection. Now we're at the train layout. Just start pushing buttons. And here comes engine 49. Maybe. As the train goes by. Oh, there goes the door. Firemen are going down the pole over there. I don't know if you can see that. Mel's Drive-In. All right, let's hit the button and get the trains going. The greatest show on earth. And after your tour, you can come in here to the gift shop. She got a nice item of your adventure through the museum. Only six people at a time. We're going climbing to the bird cage. Overview of the property. We'll just do a 360 here. There is a lot to see. There's where we were just at. Now we're going to take a little walk in the park on the Thunderbird Trail. For those of you who get tired, there's uh, little stops along the way. Got a safety tip here. Hiking trails, rough trails ahead with climbing streams and difficult crossings. These trails are not recommended for people with walking difficulties, people with heart or breathing difficulties, single walkers, bring a companion. We do recommend proper footwear, proper clothing, and water. Well, I'm by myself, but I do have water. Well, once you get in here, you can bear to the right to go to Elk Lake Nature Trail. Or the sign up here says Indian Princess Falls. I think we'll do the falls. All right, we got a camp coming through here. We'll let the summer camp people come on through. How's everybody doing? Good. How are the falls? Good. Well, once you get to the uh, top up there, you got to climb on down. There's rocks across this little stream. That's not too bad. It was only about a 10 minute walk to Princess Falls. All right, we saw the Princess Falls. Now we're going to take the Elk Lake Trail. Well, there's a lot of trails you can take. There's the Warrior Trail, that was one mile. Then the Outlaw Trail, which was 1.5 miles. We're on the Elk Loop. It didn't give a uh, mileage, so it's probably about a 10, 15 minute walk. I'll let you know when I get to the end. And we did the Princess Falls Trail. I gotta watch my step there because it's uh, rather rocky through here. Elk Lake, one of Frank Phillips' favorite spots at Woolock. This lake is the recipient of the tributaries that feed it. Frank loved this spot so much that he chose it for the site of his mausoleum, which was built in 1949. Oop, gonna cross the water here. Oh, 
Well, I can see why he chose this site now. It is absolutely gorgeous here. Except for the flies buzzing around me. The Little Rock Barnyard. Little animals for little people. He's mooing at me. Hey, buddy. Yeah, I know. Terrible life you have there. Talk to me. He's hungry. The bell hung in the first Methodist church in Conway, Iowa. This was the church that Frank Phillips and his family attended in the late 1800s. The old church burned in 1919 and the bell moved to the Ellie Phillips Ranch in the 1930s before coming to Woolrock. A little sign reading while you guys look at the lake here. Below are the picnic grounds of Clyde Lake, the original site of Frank Phillips' 1926 Cow Thieves and Outlaws Reunion, a day-long party of business leaders, cowboys, Indians, and outlaws. Beautiful home here. I can imagine sitting on the back porch here in your rocking chairs, looking over the lake. This property is amazing. There's waterfalls all along here. So you can imagine sitting right here on this porch. And this is what they saw were all these rocks in the lake back in 1926. That's a 1927 Steinway covered in bark. Yes. And then all the animals that you see here on the walls and the ceilings, there are 96 of them. All these animals lived on this property except six of them. Imagine all these animals alive living on this property. That must have been crazy. That might have been actually maybe the first zoo. In the front door into the foyer here. That's one of two black rhinos that uh, were not living on this ranch. This horn couch came out of a bar in Texas. This leads to the upstairs. There's no tours upstairs, but this uh, the house had nine bedrooms, and each bedroom had their own private bath. Presidents Truman and Roosevelt held gatherings here. A bongo. Baboon. Leopard. African lion. Nile crocodile. Now it's all type of waterfowl. Greater Canadian Goose. I tell you, there is a lot to see here. I bet you if you read and looked at every article that was here, it'd probably take you two days to see everything. I've been here five hours, and according to my Strava app, walked five and a half miles, and saw a lot of stuff. The, those guns, all the paintings, the sculptures, all the birds and animals that have been uh, taxidermied. How'd you like to be that guy? He must have made a ton of money. And it was interesting, uh, going back to the house there, where all those animals were actually living on this ranch, except for six of them. So now we're gonna go get a bite to eat. I think they said there's bison burgers up here that are supposed to be really good. And then we're gonna head on out. So let's go get some lunch. All right, time to sink the teeth into a barbecue buffalo sandwich. Mmm, I can tell you that is really good buffalo. Yum. Let me continue. This is called The Night Song, a sculpture by Joe Beeler. An Indian brave plays a courting song on a flute, a song as old as time. Here at the Heritage Center, there's a picture of Frank and his chaps. So you can got his name on the side. And there they are. Well, and if your kids are bored for just walking around and seeing animals on the wall and guns and dolls and stuff, then come out here to the playground. The Phillips Family Mausoleum. Frank Phillips and Jane Phillips. And there's where they laid to rest. Well, definitely an amazing place to see and listen and read about the history of uh, Frank Phillips, an amazing man, an amazing collector of things. And uh, the property out here 
animals everywhere so you'll definitely enjoy yourself like I said there's a lot to take in and a lot of walking so be prepared and bring some water with you and on that note traveler out